This picture has been floating on the internet the past few days and a lot of people hate the code that is presented here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the common arguments. I will explain my point of view and at the end, I will explain why I think the direction that React and Nix are taking is in fact a great direction. My name is Mosh and I've helped millions of people advance their software engineering skills through this channel and my online school, codewithmosh.com. So back to this picture. To give you some context, this picture is part of the Next.js conference that was held last week. Now, if you are not familiar with Next.js, it's basically a framework for building full stack applications with React on the front end and Node on the back end. So if you're a React developer, you know that you can build the front end using React, but to build a backend, you have to use a separate backend framework like Express.js, Django, Ruby on Rails, ASP.NET Core, and so on. Now, with Next.js, we can build both the front end and back end within the same project using the same language and the same set of tools. Now, if you want to learn Next.js, I have a couple of tutorials here on this channel and comprehensive courses on my website, codewithmosh.com. So, what are the arguments against this code? So here's the code that you saw in the slide. Here we have a React component called bookmark that renders a button with an icon. And here we have a relatively new feature called a server action. And that is this function you see here. It's called a server action, meaning it's an action or a function that gets executed on the server. So when this button is clicked, this piece of code is executed. And as a result, a bookmark is inserted into the database. Now, a lot of people are arguing that this is like PHP, but it took us 20 years to get back to where PHP was 20 years ago. But this is not a valid argument because PHP runs entirely on the backend. But here we have full power of frontend and backend development. Now, the second argument is that this code is vulnerable to SQL injection attacks. A SQL injection attack is a kind of attack where a hacker can send SQL instructions to our application and do crazy things like inserting data, deleting data, and so on. Now, this happens when we build SQL instructions dynamically using string concatenation. So in this example, we are building a SQL statement for inserting a bookmark into the bookmarks table. Now, because we're building this statement using string concatenation, a hacker can send this input to our application and change our statement to something like this. So in addition to inserting a bookmark, they're also deleting all the users from the user's table. Now, the way we can prevent this is by using parameterized SQL statements. So we define our SQL statement with parameters, which are placeholders for values. What the user sends will be inserted into these placeholders. So with this technique, a hacker cannot change a SQL statement because it's fixed, okay? Now, the example that they were presenting at the Next.js conference is using Vercel's Postgres package. This page clearly explains that our SQL queries are constructed with the SQL template literal tag. This function translates your query into a native Postgres parameterized query to help prevent SQL injections. So the argument that this code is vulnerable to SQL injection attacks is invalid. Now, the third argument is that this code violates the separation of concerns principle. But what is separation of concerns and why does it matter? Well, separation of concerns is a fundamental design principle in software engineering. It suggests that by separating concerns, we can make our code better organized, more maintainable, and potentially more reusable. In this case, we have some presentation code, like the button and the icon, mixed up with database-related code. So yes, this code does violate the separation of concerns principle. So to improve this, the first thing we can do is take out this function outside of this component. So I'm going to cut this code. Now let's define a function called add bookmark. Here we should give this a parameter called slug. Now back to our component. Here we pass an arrow function and call add bookmark. So look, the end result is cleaner and more maintainable. Now we could take this further and move this function add bookmark outside of this module and put it into a separate module. But in this case, I prefer to keep it here because realistically, this is part of the implementation of this component. 
So we are not going to get any extra value in terms of maintainability by moving these two lines of code into a separate file or module. However, if this component was more complex, if it had hundreds of lines of code, and if our database related code was more complicated, yes, then it would make sense to take this function and put it into a separate module. The separation of concerns principle doesn't care how we should separate concerns. It only suggests that by separating concerns, we can make our code better organized, more maintainable, and more reusable. How we separate concerns is up to us, and we have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes different functions within the same module, sometimes different modules, sometimes different folders, sometimes different projects. What I want you to take away from this video is that software engineering is not black and white. You cannot take a principle and blindly apply it to solve every problem. Every problem is different. So in this example, I prefer to keep this function within this module. Now, the other argument is that we should not write SQL code in our components to start with. And that is a fair argument. The good thing is that server actions are not tied to this SQL function. So here we can use an object relational mapper like Prisma. And that's what I personally prefer as well. So these were some of the common arguments. Now, let me explain why I think the direction that Next.js is taking is in fact a great direction. So look, before server actions, if we wanted to implement this functionality, first we would have to manually create an API endpoint for adding a bookmark. Then we would have to handle the click event of this button. In our click handler, we would have to use the fetch API or a library like Axios to make an HTTP call to the backend. Most of the time, this process is trivial and very repetitive. Now, let me take you a few steps back. You know that when we call a function, the control of execution moves from one place to another. But to make this happen, some magic has to happen under the hood that is invisible to us. We don't have to worry about it these days, right? I learned this almost 20 years ago when I was coding in assembly. Now, in most applications, at some point, the front end needs to talk to the back end. So far, we have been in charge of making that communication happen, but Next.js is trying to free us from having to do so. Just like we don't have to think about how the control of execution moves from one place to another when we call a function. So server actions allow the client code, like this button, to communicate with the backend without worrying about the transport, without worrying about the HTTP protocol, without worrying about creating API endpoints, using the right HTTP verb like put, post, delete, and without worrying about including the right data in the request. Server actions are going to take care of all that complexity so we can focus on solving real business problems. So that was my take on this code. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it with others. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.